Hi there, everyone. Welcome to The Daily Gardener. I'm your host, Jennifer Eveling. It's May 8th. You know the saying, bad things come in threes. The dishwasher stops working. You get in a car accident. Your credit card gets stolen. Well, when it comes to our plants, like us, they can be experiencing a constellation of problems as well. Yet, we often see our plants as far less complex, minimizing their needs to a single solution. Next time, instead of trying just one solution, consider that maybe multiple changes are needed. Here's today's brevities. On this day in 1820, President James Monroe signed a bill granting a tract of public land in the city of Washington for America's Botanic Garden. Monroe liked the idea, and he agreed to let them place the Botanic Garden on property adjacent to the Capitol on the west side. It's the birthday of botanist Emil Christian Hansen, born today in 1842. Prior to Hansen, brewing was a volatile experiment, and batches could easily get infected with disease. Hansen forever changed the brewing industry with his discovery of a way to separate pure yeast cells from wild yeast cells. Hansen's method was created while he was working for the Carlsberg Laboratory. Hansen named the yeast after the lab. Samples of Carlsberg No. 1, as it was called, were sent to breweries around the world by request and free of charge. Within five years, most European breweries were using Carlsberg No. 1. By 1892, American breweries like Pabst and Anheuser-Busch were manufacturing their beers with pure yeast strains. Hansen was a Renaissance man. At various points in his life, he attempted careers as an actor, a teacher, and it was Emil Hansen who made the first Danish translation of Charles Darwin's Voyage of the Beagle. On this day in 1904, botanist Paul Kramer was born. Kramer spent his childhood on a farm in Ohio, and he got his advanced degrees at Ohio State, getting his master's and his Ph.D. in plant physiology. At Ohio State, he learned the importance of the relationship between plants and water. After graduating, Kramer joined the faculty of Duke University. He taught at Duke his entire career. Building on what he learned at Ohio State, he recognized the difficulty of studying environmental stresses on plants because the variables are so interconnected, light, temperature, humidity, being so interdependent that a change in one affects the others. This led Kramer to establish a controlled environment laboratory at the University of Wisconsin, at Duke, and at North Carolina State University. Kramer's efforts were part of a growing trend in curiosity about the effects of environmental stresses on plants, an ongoing concern as scientists study climate change. On this day in 2014, the Veggie Plant Growth System was activated on the International Space Station. Veggie was the first fresh production system, and it was developed by Orbital Technologies based in Madison, Wisconsin. The purpose of Veggie is to provide a self-sufficient and sustainable food source for astronauts, as well as a means of recreation and relaxation through therapeutic gardening. In unearthed words, it's the birthday of the famed naturalist and television personality, Sir David Frederick Attenborough, born today in 1926 in a suburb of London, England. It was Sir David Attenborough who had all of these marvelous quotes. I just wish the world was twice as big and half of it was still unexplored. 
and then this one. I can't pretend that I got involved with filming the natural world 50 years ago because I had some great banner to carry about conservation. Not at all. I always had a huge pleasure in just watching the natural world and seeing what happens. Finally, this one's my favorite. I don't run a car, have never run a car. I could say that this is because I have this extremely tender environmentalist conscience. But the fact is, I hate driving. Oops, and then here's one more. About 70 or 80 men jumped onto the track, brandishing knives and spears. To say I was alarmed is to put it mildly. I walked toward the screaming horde of men. I stuck out my hand and I heard myself say, good afternoon. (laughs) Today's book recommendation is Garden Lust, a botanical tour of the world's best new gardens by Christopher Woods. And tonight, if you're in Seattle, you're in luck because the Northwest Horticultural Society is hosting Chris Woods as part of their Wednesday evening lecture series. It starts at 645 at the Center for Urban Horticulture. Chris Woods spent three years traveling the world, seeking out the best contemporary gardens, public, private, and corporate, and he put together 50 of the best. And he focused on the gardens around the world that had been either created or significantly altered in this century, the 21st century. Chris views the gardens through a variety of themes, including beauty, conservation, architecture, both plant and landscape, as well as urban spaces. For today's garden chore, plant Angelica Arch Angelica, also known as Angelica Root. It's the herb used to flavor Benedictine and vermouth. Quite honestly, if we were bees, we'd need a license to sell it because bees and pollinators go positively mad for it. It's like they get drunk on it. It has so much natural sugar that Martha Washington once shared a recipe for how to candy it. One explanation for the Arch Angelica part of its name is that according to folklore, it blooms on this day, the day of Michael the Archangel, May 8th, and it was believed to be a preservative against evil spirits and witchcraft. And it was held in such esteem that it's often called the root of the Holy Ghost. Finally, here's something sweet to revive the little botanic spark in your heart. It's rhubarb time. And here's a delightful rhubarb pudding recipe from the Boston Globe from June 3rd, 1912. Arrange in layers in a buttered baking dish, two cups of breadcrumbs, which have been soaked in water, two cups of rhubarb, the grated rind of one lemon, half a cup of scalded raisins, that got my attention, one cup of sugar, and two tablespoons of butter cut into tiny little pieces. Squeeze the juice of half a lemon over the whole thing, sprinkle with more buttered crumbs, then cover and bake for an hour. And that's it, rhubarb pudding from 1912. Thanks for listening to The Daily Gardener, and remember... For a happy, healthy life, garden every day. The Daily Gardener is produced weekdays in lovely Maple Grove, Minnesota. You can find complete show notes over at thedailygardener.org. And be sure to share the show with your garden friends. You can find The Daily Gardener on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And while you're over at Facebook, don't forget to join The Daily Gardener community. Just search for The Daily Gardener community on Facebook and request to join. And finally, a special thank you to my team at Podfly Productions, where my editor is Eric Begay.